All right. Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing? So this week's Parsha is Parshas Naso. <clears throat> and in Parshas Naso, we have several things. It's actually the longest Parsha of the year. It's the longest single Parsha. But also it contains several interesting things. One is the laws of the Sota. That's a woman who is accused of adultery. She goes through the ordeal of the bitter waters and uh, she is either vindicated or found guilty thereby. We then have the laws of the Nazarite, the Nazir, um, which is someone who takes an oath, usually a temporary oath, to not cut their hair, not have any grape products, no wine, no grape juice, no grapes, not even grape seeds, nothing, and not to come in contact with the dead, not to visit cemeteries and so forth. We have Birkas Kohani. We have the blessings of the priest, the priestly blessing. And we have also the offerings of the Nasiim, the original Hanukkah, the original dedication of the altar, um, which took place in, in the month of Nisan. And we uh, it's actually the readings that we read on Hanukkah. There are connections between all these things. Our sages say, they ask a question, they say, Lama Nismacha Parsha Saita, Parsha Nazir. Why is the chapter about the woman who's suspected of adultery connected to the paragraph of the Nazarite? And the Gemara answers, Me Shira is a Saita Pakilkula, whoever sees the the Sota, the woman accused of adultery, in her state of shame and the damage to society that such improprieties could cause, Yazar is Asmimini. He should separate himself from wine. When, when I think about this, I remember. When I was learning in yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael, I had a good friend of mine there, and this bacher he grew up in a from home in Farakaway. His parents were Bali Tshuva, and you know from Sher Yoshev, and the son always asked his parents, "How come we can't have a television in the house?" You grew up with the television, you're okay. The so parents answered, they said, if it was Leave it to Beaver and the Lone Ranger that was on when we were kids, so it goes into hate. You could, uh, you could, uh, you know, be, you, you, you could watch such a thing. You could have a television. The kind of garbage that's on TV now, this was, early 2000s. Um, we can't, uh, and, and, you know, I guess he was talking, you know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, is when he discussed this with his parents. Uh, it's much worse now, although it was pretty bad then. It was already bad in the 70s, really, a lot of things. Um, got a little better in the 80s, actually, and then went back to bad in the 90s. Um, so he said, if it, he would always say, if it was Leave It to Beaver and the Lone Ranger, it was into Hank, you could watch that. But with the stuff that's on now, no. So this is really the answer to questions a lot of people have. Why today is there so much more external expressions of religion in the Orthodox world? Meaning nowadays it's pretty common. It wasn't so years ago. 
in America for people to wear a long beard, to have payas, for people to wear black hats, to people to wear beckishes, strimals, and it's getting more and more common, and other expressions of religiosity, you know, insist everything, black kosher, uh, all other kinds of expressions of religiosity, that people are uh, more devout today than, than they were in the old days. They're kind of going back, and it's not only in Judaism, it's, you know, it's happening other places too, in other religions. And people are reaching back to, to the old-fashioned ways. You know, the same thing I talked to uh, one of my co-workers, actually I supervise him, someone who works for me is a Catholic deacon, and he said, you know, he sees the young priests, they want to wear a cassock all the time. Whereas that, that, that's gone out of style a long time ago, but that's how they want to go. So it's not, it's not only by us. The same thing in other religions too. So, what's this all about? How can we explain explain this phenomenon? You know, I mean, you looked at uh, you looked at uh, the yeshivas, Torah Vedas, Mir, Chaim Berlin, whatever. In the old days, gray suits, gray hats, blue shirts. It wasn't like now, black and white. Even though today I'm wearing a blue shirt and a baseball cap, but you know, I wore my Becker show all day with the baseball cap and the blue shirt. <laughs> Uh, at work uh, what's this all about where, where, where is this coming from so again we gotta look at look at the popular culture uh, there was recently a, a biopic about Laurel and Hardy people know about Laurel and Hardy and Oliver it was a really nice movie the, the, the movie about Laurel and Hardy Stan and Ollie it was called it's, it's worthwhile to watch relatively clean not perfect of course but it's relatively okay um, we know Oliver Hardy always played with his tie if you remember that was his trademark he played with his tie that was like a nervous twitch he had where did that come from? It wasn't something he did in real life. It was something he developed as a shtick in the movies. Now, both Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy were silent movie comedians before they were a team. Actually, they started to team together in the silent era. But before that, they were on their own. And there was one movie where Oliver Hardy, an early silent film, I don't know if it was for Keystone or another company, and Oliver Hardy was playing a sailor, swabbing the deck, and they, they threw water on him, and it was, you know, all kinds of slapstick comedy. And there was one scene where he thought to himself, you know, it would be really funny, because it was mostly ad-libbed, especially in the early silent movies, I'm going to blow my nose in the tie. But then he realized, you know, the censors are not going to like that. And they're going to remove that from the film. And film was very expensive back then. Film is still expensive now. now but now we record on digital. It's a lot cheaper. But back then it was very rare, very expensive. And so, and they wanted to try to get everything done in one take. And so if he had to cut anything out of the film, that would have been, they would have probably, Hal Roach would have taken it out of his, out of his, uh, you know, uh, salary that he's that he wasted film by doing something so vulgar as blowing his nose in a tie. So instead of doing that, he just kind of played with his tie because he thought quick, and then that became his his uh, trademark. Can you imagine such a thing? It was considered vulgar. To, to play with your tie, to, to blow your nose in the tie, that was considered vulgar. In 1940, Charlie Chaplin was, of course, famous for the silent era, and his first, like, real talkie, where he talked, uh, even though in, in 
modern times other people talked, but where he talked was the great dictator, where he lampooned Hitler, and he played a Jewish barber who happened to look like a, uh, a dictator named Adenoid Hinkel, who was a, a, a spoof, a satire on Hitler. And he was very worried, this was before America got into the war, it's 1940, and he was very worried that this is going to lead to, the censors are going to, especially that was after the Hayes Code, the Hayes Code came out in, I think, 1934, 1936, around there, so the, the Hayes Code, they're going to chop up this movie. In the end, Chaplin writes in his autobiography, there was only one thing that they had to take out of the out of the movie was that he used the word lousy, L-O-U-S-Y. That was considered a vulgar word. You're not allowed to say lousy. In the 50s, we know I Love Lucy, Lucille Ball, she wasn't allowed to say the word pregnant. That's a vulgar word. Ozzie and Harriet were in two different beds. You know, it was a big scandal when Mary Tyler Moore on the Dick Van Dyke show put on, on pants. And even already, even in the 70s, the Brady Bunch, they didn't have a toilet in their bathroom. That was the first time they really even showed a bathroom. There was no toilet. And, and now, we're, how low we've fallen from that time. So that's the answer, <laughs> meaning when the outside world was much more at least ostensibly clean, even though they weren't in their private lives, but at least they, they had a public persona that was uh, understood that certain things are not appropriate, you know. I mean, it, it's, it's so strange to see Warner Brothers, they, they saved their bloopers and to see, you know, Humphrey Bogart cursing, you know, it's a strange, uh, strange thing. We're not used to that. So anyway, um, you know, uh, that's why we're, we're stricter now than we were in the old days. God should have mercy on us and we should be able to, to, uh, to serve him and, and be Ehrlich Eden. And uh, and become better. All right. God bless. Please like and subscribe. See you later.